Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. In this session on environmental geography, we are going to learn about tundra biome. So till now we have covered till taiga and now we are looking at the polar region where this kind of particular biome is present. So let's go ahead and learn about tundra. But before going ahead, please like and subscribe to the channel The Geoecologist and you can also follow us on Instagram by the name of The Geoecologist. Now first thing that we need to understand is the climatic part of tundra so the temperature distribution let's understand what is there the tundra climate is characterized by very low mean annual temperature because it's the polar region so in midwinter temperatures are as low as 40 to 50 degrees c below freezing point so minus 40 to 50 degrees c is the temperature in winters then summers are relatively warmer but that also is close to zero sub zero so even summers are very chill now, within the Arctic and Antarctic circles, there are weeks of continuous darkness because of impact of rotation and revolution factors. So the sun rays don't reach this particular biome. That's where there is another important characteristic. So the ground remains solidly frozen throughout and is completely inaccessible to plants. So remember, it is devoid of all plants. Now, frost occurs at any time and blizzards are a common phenomenon. Okay, so blizzards are strong winds with snow. So that is common and reaching a velocity of 130 miles an hour. That is very much important to understand. So strong winds with this heavy wind speed that is 130 miles an hour is a frequent phenomena in this particular climate. So let's understand this. Tundra form in two distinct cold and dry regions. This is about distribution. What are these two distinct regions? Let's understand. Arctic tundra is one. So Arctic circle, that is Alaska, Canada, Russia, Greenland, Iceland, Scandinavia. So these are one part that is, for example, on far southern regions in Antarctica as well. So that is largely in Arctic and far south that is in Antarctic. And the other is Alpine tundra. So this is the second distinct region. Alpine tundra is, Alpine word is coming from Alps. So again higher elevation atop these mountains where you have certain temperature that is again similar to the polar region that's where this kind of condition is there so alps and himalaya that's where the temperature is below freezing point so for most of the year what happens the tundra biome is completely frozen completely cold and this biome has a short growing season very short so it is followed by harsh conditions that the plants and animals in the region need to adapt to so it's a very harsh conditions where these adaptations of these available little whatever is available of plants and animals they have to survive so tundra climate first we understand the precipitation now precipitation is mainly in the form of snow and sleet and convectional rainfall is generally absent because largely it's a frozen condition so no convection is there not much of heat transfer is there so largely it's only in the form of snow and sleet now understand the natural vegetation what is there there are no trees so tree is completely absent whatever it is there in the form of mosses lichens these are found here and there in the distributed format coastal lowlands now coastal areas of these particular biomes are supporting hardy grasses and what happens because of these hardy grasses reindeer is a very famous example which is there because the pasture is available for the reindeers so these are reindeer mosses which provide pasture for these particular animals to thrive on so in the brief summer berry bearing bushes there are certain bushes that have these berries and arctic flowers these bloom in very short season okay mammals such as wolves foxes musk ox arctic hare and lemmings these are there as a major mammals that live in the tundra region and of course penguins are there as we know in the antarctic region and polar bear is very famously there so now let's understand the human activities human activities of the tundra are largely confined to the coastal belt okay because interior tundra it's completely not livable no animal rearing is possible so what happens the coastal tundra is largely where you have human activities so people live in semi-nomadic life so it means they keep on shifting their place of living so in greenland northern canada and alaska they live in eskimos as we have read in ncrt they are called they live the people who live are eskimos and they live in igloos so during winter they live in compact igloos so that, that is a particular housing and their food is fish seals walruses 
polar bears this is where they are linked so human beings in interaction with the environment how they are living there you can understand so eskimos live in igloos and their food is derived from these particular animals like fish seals polar bears and others so nowadays what is happening is rifles instead of traditional harpoons are being used now they have also grown they have become advanced so they are using rifles okay to hunt these animals now recent development that is important in this arctic region let's understand what has happened new settlements have come up why because of one important point that is discovery of minerals that is what has brought the new settlements to this particular area so gold is mined in alaska remember gold is very important for everyone now petroleum it's a very high valued product that is in kenai peninsula alaska and copper at rankin inlet in canada so remember gold petroleum copper these have been found and that's why newer settlements to mining activities have developed what is happening with decline of ling of reserves of iron ore what has happened the great lakes region where large iron ores were present now iron ore deposits in labrador are gaining importance so an alternative has been found in labrador so rich deposits of iron ores at kiruna and galiva that is in sweden these have been developed now so new ports of arctic seaboard of eurasian part where europe and asia is combined so eurasian arctic seaboard is, has made it possible for what for timber production that is happening in siberia now they are being transported from this arctic seaboard and with this comes the problem so what is the problem of this biome air pollution that is coming because of this mining activities petroleum extraction is happening mining is happening so air pollution has become a evident issue now the biggest threat that everybody is facing here is climate change impacts so what is happening the melting of these glaciers and ice so what is happening melting of polar ice caps and because of which now it is a threat to the biome in terms of its flora and fauna okay and mining and drilling activities are definitely have come up as threats to the ecology so this is major issue that is happening in the polar region okay so polar regions are yet to be protected and conserved and there are many plans and programs that are running but yet these are the major recent developments in this region so we understood about the tundra with terms of its characteristics and also the problems so thank you for watching and subscribing to the geoecologist keep learning stay safe stay tuned we are coming up with more lectures on geography thank you so much